Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us. The show brings you a matchup of division rivals. It's the Chicago White Sox going up against the Kansas City Royals. John Shambi and Chris Singleton on the call. Singy, one of the stories in this one is a highly anticipated Major League debut, and all eyes will be on. For myself, no one's by my side. Even when they ask him their questions, they don't seem to remember. So, just about set. Here's a speed threat Shoeless Joe Jackson. Leading off the center fielder, number 21. The wine of the pitch. Misses off the play, and we're underway. First pitch, 7 11. The 1 0. Just missed. When you get ahead in the count, there's no doubt that the success rate goes up, and that's what he's been doing. It's made a big impact for him in recent games. The 2 0 is in for a strike. Cold night tonight, Boog, and that's a pretty firm fastball right there. I tell you what, memories of getting jammed, they are creeping into my mind right now. That's ripped. Base hit. Around first, digging for two. Throws to second. Save! you got to get on your horse and get to that thing and get it back in because he's going to come barrel around first. He's going to put pressure on you. If you bobble it or you don't get there in a hurry, he's going to make you look silly and end up on second base. And next to hit for the Sox, Mini Minoso. And he swings and misses at the initial offering. Righty delivers. It's softly on the ground left side. And he picks it up in foul territory. No outs. Runner on second. Swing and a miss. And he got him. Not what you're looking for after the leadoff double. A strikeout. And there's one away. And that's the first strikeout of his major league career. And it could be the first of many if he meets the goals he set for himself and the expectations others have for him. He doesn't want to just win games. He wants to dominate at this level. Do you think young pitchers could sometimes get too caught up in trying to rack up K's early in their career? Boog, I think they can. It's kind of like a hitter that doesn't have power. The thrill is still hitting the ball over the fence. And so for a guy, even if he doesn't have power stuff or strikeout stuff, a strikeout is still something that makes him stick his chest out a little bit further. The pitch. That's a strike. Kicks and fires. And now the count is even. Runner at second here, one gone. Drilled out towards left center field. That's well struck. That one's back. Up against the wall and brings it in. Runner tagging for third. Now we take a look at the lineup put together by the Hall of Fame manager, Tony La Russa. And a big part of it, a guy with a great track record, Harold Baines. Boog, he has over 1,500 RBIs in his career. I mean, this is a guy that loves the opportunity to drive in runs. Some people shrink under that pressure with runners in scoring position. But he spent his entire career in the middle of the lineup, and everybody knows he can do some damage.
He swings and fouls one off. No score yet, but a runner at third with two away. Started after the 0 1 pitch, and now a check down to first. Yes, he did. That's a swing. Stays alive. The pitch. And a swing and a miss. And that is that. I think the key is arm action on the changeup. When you can sell it like a fastball, you drop the velocity, you get the swing and miss, and you walk off the field. Of the first, and our pitcher in this game, Ted Lyons. And singing a special day for him. He's making his major league debut here. And I'm sure he's got some nerves. He'll be excited for that first pitch to be in and over with so that he can settle in to pitching just like he did in the minor leagues. Exciting moment. He's got his family in town. I think this moment's going to be a huge tone setter for his career. Bottom of the first, and now the center fielder, number 26. The wind and the pitch. Off the plate, inside. Ball one. The wind to kick the pitch. Pulls that one foul. Lions. Truly unique when it comes to pitch repertoire. Most guys are either knuckleballers or they're not. Not the case with him. He throws a knuckleball. It's not considered his primary offering but when you're talking about trying to mix things up he'll toss it in there and he deals and a count one and two And a pitch. Popped up to the left. Into foul ground. One away. And here now, the lineup for the Royals. Now here is Frank White. He's not the power guy, but he can hurt you to all parts of the ballpark. In there, and it's 0-1. And the key for him is balancing and using that knuckleball pitch in the right spots because it is a nasty pitch. As long as he just continues to keep hitters off balance, he can have success with not having a high-velocity fastball and going to that knuckleball. And there's two down. Batting third, the third baseman, George. Two outs, base is empty. And to the plate for Kansas City, George Brett. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. That one's in there, 0 and 1. And again, really unique because so few guys in history have thrown the knuckleball when it wasn't their primary offering. The 0-1. Inside corner, and that's called a strike. Yeah, his swing is so good. It's in the zone a long time. He gets the barrel to it a lot, and that produces more base hits. Next pitch inside. And a count one and two. And here it comes. That one ran inside, almost got him. Singy, one of the things that's interesting is that guys really don't worry about swing and miss from an offensive standpoint anymore. So when you see somebody who contacts the ball like this, 
Do you think of that as plus value? Absolutely. If he's doing damage now, if he's rolling over and, and grounding out, then it's a different story. But yeah, if he could put the ball in the gaps or over the fence, 100%. Ripped, but it curls foul. And a foul ball stays alive. Little. The wind of the pitch. Hard ground ball base now. Love how he let that ball travel, trusted his that hands. Cool. Nice job of going the other the way. So here's the cleanup hitter, Bo Jackson. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Yeah, and the domino effect of that is running up pitch counts on pitchers and then either getting them to a place of fatigue or getting into the bullpen perhaps before you get to those higher leverage arms at the back end. Over to first, and he's saved. You'll want. And that drops in for a strike. One of the things that Jim Leland used to say when I was broadcasting with the Marlins, the longer a plate appearance goes for a batter, the more likely it is that something good will happen for the hitter. To the right side, they take the force out, and the inning is over. Royals leave one. We played an inning. No score. Back here in Kansas City, here's the veteran outfielder, Harold Baines. Leading off for the White Sox, the right fielder, number two, Baines. Now the right-hander ready to go. Still no score. And there's a ball. And fouled off. Gonna count one and two. Clearly, he was sitting on a fastball right there and just ended up out in front of the slider. Hey, you can't fault him for his commitment. Now he's just gonna have to battle two strikes. Got him looking. And that's the first out. Nelly Fox steps to the plate for the White Sox. Nelly Fox. And he swings and misses, and it's nothing at one. No score here in the second. Next offering upstairs. James Kingsley, our plate umpire, consistent as you mentioned, and maybe a little generous on the edges. Hammered, and this one could be extra bases. Around first, heading for two. And that's a double. One out, runner at second. And up next for Chicago, number 23. And first offering is fouled off. Second inning here, no score. Next offering is in for a strike. Next offering is fouled back. He's mixing his pitches really well late on that fastball after seeing the changeup. See if he can elevate one. I think if he does, he'll get the swing and miss. Next one misses. Now one and two. Left-hand batter waits. In the dirt. 
tag safe. He's into third of the wild pitch. No score here, but a runner at third with one down. Out to short. In plenty of time to first, but the go-ahead run comes in to score. Batting eight, the shortstop, number four. Two outs, space is empty. So up next for Chicago, number four. This guy is an elite level hitter, especially considering contact, just the ability to hit for average. What you really like, though, stays in against those righties, and that's not so easy as a right-handed batter. There's some players, for whatever reasons, they seem to just face a slew of right-handed pitchers, and their comfort level increased so much that they'd actually prefer to face that same side thrower in a tough situation. Next pitch misses way outside. Kicks and deals. Good eye in that spot. Yeah, most guys struggle against the same side, whether it's left on left or right on right, and this guy's an exception. Two down, nobody on. That pitch in for a strike. Three and two down. Line drive, and that's a base hit out into center field. And that keeps the inning alive. Right there, does a great job of staying in the big part of the field. Man, there are a lot of hits there. The catcher, number 10. Now it's the White Sox catcher, number 10. First pitch, not close. And yeah, the right hander deals. That's in for a strike. One ball, one strike. The pitch. Slider misses outside. Softly hit to third. They get the force, and that is that. So they pick up a run on two hits, no errors, and a man left. We go to the bottom of inning number two. It's the White Sox one and the Royals nothing. Back here at Kauffman Stadium, now it's the rookie first baseman, Mike Sweeney. Obviously a guy who makes good contact, hits for average, but one of the things in today's game, the value in the fact that he hits both righties and lefties. And a pitch. Ball one, no strikes. They're so reliant on the matchups nowadays, Chris, and it's huge when you don't have to sit a guy or platoon him. When you can hit you know, both sides in terms of pitcher's arms, you're a guy that it's hard to take out of the lineup, and I think it's very important today when everything is under the microscope. That's a really nice play, ranging back into the outfield for that catch. We all know those could be a little tricky, especially if the wind's swirling around out there. And next up for the Royals, Carlos Beltran. I think when you contemplate him as a player, the first thing you think about is defense, and you think about that great arm. I also think about the speed. If he can get on, that's going to give one more thing for that pitcher to think about. First offering misses the mark. Next offering is in for a strike. One down, base is empty. He swings and hits a fly ball, center field. Jackson makes the grab, and there's two down. Seven. The designated hitter. Number 11. Now it's the DH, number 11. 
He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Pitch misses inside, and it's 1 0. And the 1 0. And a foul ball. That one out to right. Baines makes the catch, and that'll do it. Royals go down one, two, three. They're down one nothing. Welcome back. Top half of the third inning. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Shoeless Joe. And the right hater back to work. Ball one there. He needs a quick one, two, three this time around. Last inning through a lot of pitches. The 1 0. Now 1 to 1. Well, interesting strategy there. He must have seen something after that first pitch. Didn't attempt to bunt, but here on the second one, he does. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Leadoff hitter gone in the third. Well, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base paths, it's not just the pitcher, it's other guys that have to think about it from your infielders, have to think about that runner potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I gotta get to it quickly to try to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Minoso, the next to hit, takes ball one. And a pitch. Turned on, but foul wide of third. That one the other way. Takes it in for the out. The first baseman, number 35, Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas steps to the plate for the White Sox. He's got the power, but great contact skills. One of the best contact hitters in the game. In the air, right field, Beltron as he glides to his left. No trouble here, puts it away for the out. And that will end the inning. One, two, three, go the White Sox. But they lead it one to nothing. As we go to the last of the third. And now it's Salvador Perez to the plate. The catcher. Salvador Perez. The right-hander back to work. On the ground, Fox gloves it, and they get Perez for the out. Batting ninth, the shortstop, number two. So up now for Kansas City, number two. This is a guy you got to keep an eye on when he digs in. Definitely been known to drop a drag bunt from time to time, and he's pretty good at it, Chris. Yeah, and he creates a, a sense of urgency for the defense because of the speed, because of the ability to put down that bond. Next offering is in for a strike. Now you see even sluggers from time to time try and use the bunt really as a way to beat the shift. Oh, and two now. One ball. Knuckler in the dirt, swing and a miss. On to first, in time for the second out. Good job.
In the air left field. Brings it in for the third out. On to inning number four. It's the White Sox one and the Royals nothing. Back here at the ballpark as we go to the top of the fourth. Here's the cleanup hitter for the Sox, Paul Canerco. The designated hitter, Paul Canerco. Here comes a pitch. You now with the shift on, hits right into it. The throw to first. That's the first out in the top of the fourth. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. And next to hit for the Sox, Harold Baines went down on strikes his first time through. Next pitch downstairs, and that's ball one. Righty to the plate. So two balls and no strikes. Well, usually a high level of confidence when you're facing a young pitcher out there on the mound. In this situation, ahead 2-0, he's put himself in a really good spot. The next pitch misses, and it's 3-0. He hasn't fallen behind in the count like this all day. He's in danger of walking his first batter right here. And the pitch. That one's in there. And now three and one. Well, triple digits on the gun. I know there are more guys that can reach that now than in the past, but it's still impressive to watch. And here's a three two. Got him swinging. He chased the changeup. Two out. This guy will throw any pitch in any count. Three two. He goes off speed, gets the out. The batter number two. Second base. Nelly Fox. And up next for Chicago, Nelly Fox doubled in his first A.B. First pitch way inside a fastball. Two outs. And a swing and a line drive at a right field. That's a base hit. And that extends the inning. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night. And just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. Now the third baseman, number 23. And that's in there for strike one. And the righty deals. Slapped foul. The 2 Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. Righty delivers, stays alive. Left hand hitter waits. And a foul ball, he stays alive. At the belt and fires. Swing and a pop up in foul ground. And makes the play, and that's out number three. The White Sox leave one. They lead it one nothing. And welcome back. Bottom of the fourth. Now it's the second baseman, Frank White. The second baseman, Frank. Lions back to work. 
He was late there, strike one. Generally, second, third time through the lineup, you want to be able to lean on those secondary pitches and command them. Looks like he's doing a nice job of it. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And there's one away. Oh, there's the three-pitch strikeout. He can do whatever he wants with the baseball right now. Joel Brett. Now, George Brett, one for one with a single so far. First offering, and it just misses. I remember when all the eyes in baseball were on Brett as he chased the magic 400 mark in 1980. Didn't miss by much. Finished at 390. Swing and a high fly ball out there towards left field. Minoso racing over to make the catch. Up next for the Royals, the left fielder, Bo. So digging in, Bo Jackson. He's a guy who does it all. He is quite an athlete. I mean, you look around the other sports, basketball, football, you feel like he could thrive in one of those sports too. In there for strike one. Man, I mean, nice job just presenting it to be better than it actually was. The pitch. On a line out towards center. Jackson makes the catch, and that'll do it. Royals bats are quiet there. Still behind by a count of one to nothing. New inning getting started, and now number four. Chris, his skill set straight out of the mid-80s. Good contact, not much power, and he could run. He always uses the wheels to his advantage. His biggest challenge in this day and age is to not get caught up in trying to hit home runs because so many people are. That hits the dirt, and the count even one and one. The one-one. Swings and lines a base hit into left field. Tried to get inside on him, but he was now ready for it. Just kept his hands in and turned on the pitch. Quick bat through the zone. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. Number 10 steps to the plate for the White Sox. And there's a foul ball. Rudder at first with no outs here. The 0 1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. This is one of those situations the infielders have to pre plan and understand that the ball's got to be hit extremely hard right at them if they're going to have a chance to go for a double play. The pitch. Here's a rocket out to left. And there's one down. Now batting the center fielder, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Shoeless Joe Jackson digs in now. Singing, he's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport. How difficult is that to do? Well, I'll just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the ability to look out there, but also to be able to turn on the inside pitch. Those that can really sharpen things on the outer half, those are the ones that become elite. Next offering is in for a strike. And he deals. And he pumps it a strike. Goodness, I think he just took the best pitch he's going to see in this at bat. You don't get many like that in that location. I don't know if you take that pitch against any pitcher out there on the mound. Yeah. 
The other way. Stretches out and hauls it in. Not fooled at all right there. He was clearly all over it, but sometimes you hit it too hard and right at someone. You're looking for one of those bloop hits to get a knock sometimes. Mini Minoso steps to the plate for the White Sox. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. First offering misses badly for ball one. So how much does his speed factor into his ability to go get it? It's heartbreaking for the hitter because off the bat, he thinks this ball's going to get down. Because of that speed and the ability to make up so much ground, he... In well, we'll hold that thought as that's the third out and we'll end the inning. So a man left for the White Sox, but they hold a 1-0 lead. Back here in Kansas City, John Shabby with my buddy Chris Singleton. It's set to get us started. Bottom five, Mike Sweeney. Mike Sweeney. The wind of the pitch. There's a strike. There's one guy that I can think about, Boog, who started as a third baseman, Alex Gordon, and then became an elite perennial gold glover out in left field for the Kansas City Royals. But he's a guy, when you watch him play, you would imagine that that's all he ever played in his life was the outfield. Now batting, the right fielder, Carlos Beltran. And now, Carlos Beltran. Yeah, some guys just have instincts, right? I mean, that's the way it goes. We talk about Larry Walker, the Hall of Famer, and his instinct on the bases, despite the fact that he didn't play a, a ton of baseball as a kid. That one's in there, 0 and 1. The wind and the pitch. That's a ball. In the air out to center, and that'll get down for a hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Now that Only two hits allowed so far tonight, Boog, so I don't think that one will disrupt his momentum all that much. You know, he's really been on top of his game, commanding his pitches all night long. So now the DH spot, number 11. If you don't get ahead in the count, you can forget about having any success against him. there and it's 0-1. The pitch. That clips the zone and that's strike two. With two strikes may see some movement over there at first base try to stay out of a double play here. Line and a base hit into right. Here's the throw and he's safe. So it's first and third with one down. Well, he found himself behind in the count right there, but he didn't give in. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. Now we'll see if they can pick up that tie and run and start us over here in the late innings. Perez takes a ball as he stands in for the second time. Swing and a tapper. Tags the runner for one. Over to first. Safe. Now batter. Number two. So two down now. And here is number two. First pitch. And that's in for a strike. First and second, two down. The next offering misses. And now it's even one and one. 
Right hander kicks deals. They say you win. Next pitch misses. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, that's outside. So both runners should be on the move here on the full count pitch. Yeah, this is a good chance to tie up this ball game. See if he can find some open grass in the outfield. On the ground to third. Throw over to Thomas. Out with room to spare, and that's the inning. Royals strand a pair. They still trail 1-0. set for the top of the sixth now the batter now Frank Thomas he's not going to get cheated up there no he's not he's looking to do damage with every swing he takes the pitch a swing and a miss and that's strike one that was straight queso right there The 0 1. Way out front for strike two. Quickly in an 0 2 count, you've got to figure out a way to shorten your path to the baseball. Put it in play somewhere, then you got a chance. Next offering is fouled back. Next one misses. Yeah, the count one and two. Two strikes. And another ball. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Wanted to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing, that high fastball. You have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. Next pitch has popped up. Sweeney makes the catch, and there's one down. Now batting, designated hitter, Paul Canerco. Paul Canerco now at the plate. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Well, it's been a very impressive outing so far. His command has been a big part of it. Even when he misses, he misses outside the strike zone, which is exactly what a pitcher wants. The why to kick the pitch. And now it's even up. Now, there's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if he can mix that in whenever he wants. One and two now. Upstairs. He really committed to that fastball up at the top of the zone. He knows that if he makes a mistake in the zone, it gets hit hard by a power guy like this. That's a nice miss right there. The wind of the pitch stays alive. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And there are two outs. Uh, I think he might have gotten away with one right there. That was a very hittable pitch right over the heart of the plate. And I know that batter is kicking himself right now. Would like to get that pitch again. Just pulled the string on it, and the deception gets him the K. Harold Baines steps to the plate for the White Sox. And a foul ball. Next pitch is outside. K 
kicks and fires. And it really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Popped up to the left, into foul ground, and that's the inning. Top of the order due up in the home half of the sixth. It's the White Sox one and the Royals nothing. Bottom of the six. Here's the center fielder, number 26. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. Lions back to work. Strike one. And you played behind guys, and they loved having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about is how much pitchers enjoy having those elite defenders behind them. That to right. Baines pulls it down. One up, one down. Now back, second baseman, Frank White. And to the play for Kansas City, Frank White. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at bat. In there for strike one. Well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's well above league average, and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up until this point. Kicks and deals. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. So he's gotten deep into this game, and at least so far, not showing a ton of signs of fatigue. Joe Brett. So up next, George Brett, one for two. And that's in there for strike one. And the right-hander deals. A little bit low. Here's a one-one. Out to short. Fires to first on the run. He is safe. And he beats the throw by a whisker. The effort was there with the jump throw. You got to love it, but it just wasn't in time. Still a really impressive play just to get to that ball and make it close at first. And not every shortstop can even make that play. Runner at first with two away. Next to hit, Bo. Next offering is down low. One and oh. And a pitch. I got one ball, one strike. Lions throws oh, the first. Brett dives back in. The pitch. That one catches the corner for a strike. And a pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. This one in the air right field. Baines settles under this one. Squeezes it, and that'll do it. So one left for Kansas City. They trail here, one nothing. Welcome back. We go to the top of the seventh at the play. Nelly Fox. Off the, White Sox. the second baseman. Nelly and a pitch. Fox. Swing and a miss. Strike one. I guess you throw it that hard, you can get away with locations like that right down the middle. But I still think it's a dangerous pitch. Don't want to do it again. Jackson trots over to his left. 
He can't get there. That should be extra bases. In safely with a double, his second of the day. Oh, this has been a really nice game at the plate for him. He looks locked in. Put a really nice balanced swing on it, and when you can rope one into the gap like that, you're thinking extra bases from the first couple of steps out of the box, and he'll feel real good about that one. And the Royals manager making his way towards the mound now as he will make the move. Number 55 won't go any further. Number 31 comes on now, and he'll do his best to keep this close. Number 31. Number 23 steps to the plate for the White Sox. First pitch, and he just misses. Right-handed reliever on the corner for a strike. One ball, one strike. Movement in the bullpen. A right-hander is up and throwing. So now one and two. He has a tendency to chase out of the zone, and that slider that's down, that's one of his money pitches to get that swing and miss. Runner at second, nobody out. Next pitch just misses. And yeah, that's ball two. And the air out to center. And there's one away. Number four. Number four steps to the plate for the White Sox. It's amazing. We get a chance to talk to a lot of opposing managers. This guy scares managers on the other team as much as anyone. He gets to fly beneath the radar with uh, ground ball, and that's through the infield. Now a long throw home. The tag. Ow. It's a double. Third hit of the night for him. Pretty close play at the plate right there. Always an exciting one, though, and a really nice job by the defense to cut him down. It's a pretty big blow to a team when you lose a potential run that was so close to getting in there. Number 10 steps to the plate for the White Sox. And yeah, the first offering is not close. And here it comes. And it's fouled away. Next offering misses, and it's two and one. Runner leads away at second. That one fouled off two and two. Really great change of speeds. He goes off the off speed to the fastball, and the hitter doesn't know what's coming next. Soft contact in the air. Makes the catch in and over. The White Sox leave one, but they're on top, one nothing. Back here at Kauffman Stadium, and here's the first baseman, Mike Sweeney. All oh, these fans definitely want to get involved in the game. All it's going to take is to get the leadoff man or even a base runner on. The pitch. And that one just missed off the outside edge. Action in the pen down there. Number 37 up and loosening in the pen. Number 31 warming up as well. And the righty deals. 
And a swing and a miss. Well, I'm impressed with that challenge pitch right there. Even with this slim lead, this guy's not afraid to go right after these hitters. Strike two. Looking to get the tying run on base. That one pushed foul. He's gone off speed. He needs to elevate here with two strikes out of the zone. Stays alive. The one two. Got him. And one away in the bottom of the seventh. A big first out here in the seventh via the punch out. Yeah, it just does so much to change the outlook of an important inning like this. When you get the leadoff hitter so critical in setting the table when you got a tight game like this. So a strikeout really puts them on their heels. Beltron at the plate now. That's ball one. And a 1-0. No, that pitch not even close. A 2-0 count now. He can't be over-aggressive. He's got to make sure that pitch is right on a tee for him. That one ripped. And it one-hops the wall. In with a one-out triple as that puts the tying run at third. His second knock of the night. So digging in, number 11. Now that Number 11. Swings through that one. 0 oh 1. The tying run is 90 feet away. High fly ball out of the left center field. Minoso puts it away. Here comes the runner from third. The throw is offline, and he's in to score. It's 1-1. One, one. Well, that's a quality at bat right there. You know the situation. You need something in the air and deep enough, and that's exactly what he did. Good pass to the baseball. Salvador Perez steps in for the Royals. He's a big, strong guy. Can untie this game with one swing. That one's in there, 0 and 1. He didn't want to give up that run, but he did. Got the fly ball, sack fly out. Now it's time to attack these other guys. Get your team back in the dugout. Oh and 2 as he waves at that one. Just an outstanding job of spinning the baseball, moving it around, doing what he does. Swing and a base hit. Well, that certainly feels good when you can win the at bat after being down in the count, up against it with two strikes right there. Hooked around that pitch on the outside, but he was still able to square it up pretty nicely, and that takes quick, strong wrist to pull that off. So two down, number two steps in for the Royals. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. I really like how he's been attacking hitters early in at bats. He's thrown strikes on the first pitch to over 70% of the guys he's faced in this one. Two gone. The possible go-ahead run at first. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And a foul ball, left side.
two outs. Swing and a miss, and that is that. The tying run comes across, and we're knotted up again. We look ahead to inning number eight, all tied 1-1. Ready to begin the eighth. Stepping in, the White Sox leadoff off man, White Shoeless Sox. Joe Jackson. Shoeless Joe Jackson. The right-hander back to work. And he bunts, but that's a foul ball. The next pitch misses, and the count is one and one. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. Righty delivers. Now a high fly ball out to left center. Drops in for a hit. Couldn't run it down. Well, that may end up being an at bat. We go now back to later on left. when this game is over. Mini. Now a huge at bat Minoso. in this game coming up. Go ahead, run on base. Now it's going to be Mini Minoso. Move over to first, trying to keep him close. In there, and it's 0-1. Here comes a pitch. And that misses off the outside edge. The guy at the plate could recognize slider out of the hand. Didn't stay in the tunnel very long in terms of depth and perception. He knew right away it was an off-speed pitch. The 1-1. One -one. And now 2-1 and one after that missed inside. The go-ahead run aboard at first. Nobody out. Next pitch is outside. So here we go. Base runner at first. Could be running on the pitch. He's got good enough speed to steal the bag to get in scoring position, even if it's a swing and miss at the plate. And that's ball four. The first base. So up next for Chicago, Frank Thomas. Oh, well, look out here. He's going to come up ready to swing in this situation. And that one gets away at the plate. Nothing happening on the bases, though. No outs, runners at first and second. That one hammered, but pulled foul. And the pitch. Popped up, middle of the diamond. Two on, one out. And here is Paul Canerco. Now be careful with this guy. He's got power. He can untie it with one swing. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Well, a mistake right here could untie this ball game. If you're the pitcher out there, you just want to be a little more cautious. At the belt and fires. And now two and nothing. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. One out. The go-ahead run is at second. Now three and oh. At this point in the game, you cannot issue free passes. He's going to have to challenge this hitter. Hitter's got to be ready to swing it.
Two on, one out. That's a strike across the top of the zone. Take it all the way on 3-0 right there, and as a hitter, you're saying, why couldn't I get that pitch earlier in the count when I'm looking to swing? Three, two. And that one fouled off. Well, he knows they don't want to give him anything to hit. But when you've got opportunities to drive in runs, you've got to expand the zone. He's capable of going out there and doing damage with it. And they're all loaded up. Well, the stage has been set for this offense, Boog. It's all about creating opportunities, and this is one of them right here. And next to hit for the Sox, Harold Baines. This is what stat nerds like myself might call a high leverage situation. Yeah, Boog, not sure what the numbers say, but clearly an at bat that could change the course of this game dramatically. Next pitch inside, 2 and 0. Oh. Pressure's on right here. 2 0 count, base is loaded. You don't want to fall to a three ball count and then walk in or on. He's got to challenge the hitter right here. And he deals. And that's in for a strike. One out, base is full. Next offering upstairs. This is a situation where the hitter is looking for something up in the zone that he can get his arms extended. What you have to be careful of is that pitch that's up, that's in on your hands. That'll pop you up in the infield, and that's exactly what the pitcher wants. Kicks and fires. Now front pulls that one foul. Now it's three and two. A little early on that fastball. I'm sure the pitcher taking a note. Look for an off-speed pitch on this next one. Three, two on the way. Ball four, he's walked in a run. He's really gotten himself into a mess out there and now forces home a run with the wall. His inning's definitely getting away from him. Here's the second baseman, Nelly. No matter what, you're playing this kind of rival. Take your game to another level. First offering misses the mark. Well, this is a critical spot for both the pitcher and the hitter. You can learn a lot about a guy by how he handles these pressure situations. Base is loaded. One away. Next offering is in for a strike. Activity in the Kansas City bullpen. Number 29, up and throwing. Number 37, a left-hander, also throwing. The next offering misses. Two and one. Boog, in situations like these, the air can get really thin up there at the plate. Got to find a way to breathe and slow everything down. Two and one now. Gets him to chase after that one. Well, and those hitters count sometimes can be a little too aggressive, and a good pitcher will play off of that. He's got to get a better pitch to hit. laboring here about to throw his 30th pitch of the inning roll to short could be two quickly to second for one and that's two last half of the eighth coming up it's the White Sox two and the Royals one Pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, number 37. And he'll do his best to hang on to this lead. Number 26 steps in for the Royals. Now this guy, a player that, if he gets on base, has the ability to really be aggressive getting around the base paths. And a pitch. That's off the mark. And that is ball one. Meanwhile, Activity in the bullpen. Roberto Hernandez preparing to come on if needed. The pitch. 
swing and a miss as he was late that time. Kicks and deals. Fought off foul. Got him looking. One out. Pretty big strikeout right there to start this eighth inning. Down one. Any leadoff base runner really makes this inning a bit more interesting. But now this offense has to switch from possibly trying to manufacture a run to needing to run into something or just try to string multiple hits together to get a run across the plate. White stands in now, looks at that one inside. Boog, he never moved because he never had time to. But that kind of velocity, you'd prefer that pitcher work away. Righty to the plate. Good eye right there. Swing and a miss. As a hitter, you got to learn something from that pitch. He clearly wasn't timed up on the fastball. In a 2-0 count, you have to be ready to do damage. Next one is off the play. Three and one. And the right-hander deals. In the air, foul off first. Hauls it in for the out. The batter, the third baseman, Joe Brett. George Brett steps in for the Royals. First offering, and it just misses. Is there a little wrinkle to that? I think there was. Yeah. A little slider action. The 1-0. -oh. That's to third. Inning over. One out, bottom of the nine. Well, I definitely say that's a statement strikeout right there. You come out of the bullpen, go right after the hitters, and three pitches later, you got one out. I'll tell you what, if you're in the dugout, you're looking at each other and saying, he's going to be tough to get to today. And now the first baseman, Mike Sweeney. That one's in there, 0-1. The tying run at the plate. That one misses, and it's a ball to strike. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Next pitch is inside. Two and one. In the air, left side. And there are two down. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there. That front shoulder coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. And the batter now, Carlos Beltran. 
And what a two-way player, not just offensively, but as good a defensive outfielder as there is in the game. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. Just amazing to me how many closers and back-end relievers just throw absolute gas these days. I never would have had a chance. A one-run lead here in the last half of inning number nine. The 0-1 is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. Nasty backdoor slider. There's really nothing you can do with that if you swing at it, so it's a good take by him. One one now. That one missed. Two balls, two strikes to count with two outs. Home team down a run. Here the home team trying to pull it out. Not close with that one. And it's three and two. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. Left hand batter waits. And a swing and a miss. And that is the ball game. Great pitcher's duel in this one. You get to a certain point where each pitcher is trying to outdo the other, go a little bit deeper into the ball game. And for these guys, it really came down to a few key at bats. This was a fun one to watch. And your final score here today, 2-1. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Shambi. We'll see you soon.